Sprint and build, day one. Stop it! Ow, my boobs. So if you're new around here, you won't have seen this old girl before. This is an ex-Sainsbury's supermarket delivery van, and we've picked her for a very specific purpose. We want to turn her into the ultimate winter camper van, and the reason is that we want to take her to the Nordics for Christmas. So she needs to keep us warm in some seriously cold temperatures. So the reason we've picked this van, and I think apart from a 4x4, this is probably, I reckon, the best van for camper van in because the insulation on the box body is the best you're ever going to get. So it's incredible. And also the space. So this vehicle is the same size as a medium wheelbase panel van. It's only six meters long, but inside it's two meters wide in the body and two meters tall as well. So we can sleep width ways in the body. And like I say, because the walls are square, the amount of space in the back is unbelievable. So let's show you what the plan is. So the first thing you're going to want to think about before you do anything with a layout is your weight. And we got a lot of stick about this van on Facebook and Insta. Everyone going, oh, you're going to be overweight, you're going to be overweight. There's two big heavy things you've got to take off. One is the steps it comes with on the back, and the other is the fridge unit that keeps this front bit cold. So we've taken those off, we've taken her to a weigh scales this morning, and she came in at 2,060 kilos. Absolutely buzzing, because that's way less than your average medium wheelbase sprinter van. So let's show you the plan. Come on in, Johnny boy. So first job is we've got to take this divider out. We're going to keep this side and just slide it down a little bit to make ourselves a big 900 by 600 shower with a little toilet in the corner. Then we've got to cut a crawl through to the cab. And I'd say this is probably the trickiest thing, or likely going to be, we don't know yet, the trickiest thing about building these vans. But a crawl through to the cab for us is non-negotiable. Next is that we're going to have a massive great big cupboard here, floor to ceiling, which is going to have our fridge in it. And then as this unit's coming out here, we're going to have our outside door there. We get John to show you the back. So the best thing about these vans is you can draw on the walls to do your plan. And that's what we've done. We had a bit of fun the other day. So this is where I'll spend most of my time and the cooker in the sink, doing all the cooking. And then- Everyone gonna... knows that is such a lie. And then I'm gonna have a fold up work table here. So that'll be nice and big. And then we've got a, a good view outside. We've got a massive window here. And then I think we're gonna just have cupboards this side, but I don't know yet. We might try and put as many in as we can. We'll just have to see how it goes. And then this is obviously where all no action happens in the bedroom area. So this is going to be a single bed here because you can sleep width ways, but it'll then pull out to be a double. So that'll be nice and big. And then this whole space here is going to be garage area, which is going to be absolutely huge. And then we'll probably have the gas storage in there as well. Then we're going to chop this door in half and then that's going to be the garage door. How you get in the back, put an infill in here. And then this here is going to be a massive window again. So when you're laying in bed, you've got a real good view. And then this side, we're going to have a bench seat coming down here and then a bench seat coming up that side as well. And then a table in the middle. And then same again, massive, beautiful window with uh, all the good scenery. So I just think we should take a moment to admire your beautiful drawings yep. here. That's me shredding and that's Jess crashing at the bottom. Oh yeah, how many times have you been snowboarding? Uh, never been before, but that's what's going to happen. Well, we all know that's Jess is going to be crashing. Yeah, that that's is fair play. <laughs> and then, no, I also, oh. look at this. Can anyone guess what that is? That's an octopus. Everybody knows that's an octopus. <laughs> And then this side, we might have a TV on the wall, we don't know, we don't really watch it, but I just think it'd be, look pretty cool having a TV there. And then also then we're going to put a massive skylight in here, we're going to get a max fan, a 500 by 700 skylight to go in there, and then probably just have an extractor fan in the bathroom. So really, really excited to get on with this build because it's going to test us in all sorts of different ways that we haven't done before, so let's get on it. Unbelievably strong. Luckily, it's no match for these little beauties. Right, I'm sick of this. I've shown the people before. I've told her to stop doing this. Actually, show them these things. Uh, okay, you ready for this? Show them. Right, proper. That's relaxed. Still, still hear it. 
What? Tense then. <laughs> Look at the state of that. <laughs> right. So, and then when you pull this glue up, you Wait. just pull up, pull up. What? Let's do it. Go on then. What? Are you going to put your face in there? Oh. You ready? Oh. This is like jackass. Oh. You're not even close. Get down there. Ready? Oh. <laughs> Come on! Oh. Oh. So the walls come out no trouble, which is a big win because we were a bit nervous that it might be rebated, but actually it was just glued and siliconed on. So you can't even tell it was there apart from a yellow line. So big win with that one. Uh, we've got all the glue and all of the silicon off now, so all I've got to do is get on with cleaning and the rest of the paint prep. So my next job is to fill some holes. So this hole here, this is where the air conditioning unit was here and all the pipes and everything went through and bolted onto the compressor outside. So to fill this hole, I've just used a bit of the dividing wall and I've cut a core out with a hole saw. And basically I'm gonna slot that in there, I'll put a bit of duct tape on the outside, slot that in there, and then I'm gonna use some expanding foam to go around the outside of it. And then once that's fully dry, I'll bevel all the edges and use some proper fiberglass paste for it anyway. Uh, and then all the floor as well, they've got some holes in the floor where they had the drains and again where the electrical cables came up, so I'm going to do the same with them. A bit of a mess. Morning everyone. We lost you last night. John came back out after dinner and did a bit of fiberglass filling. And this morning I've just been on with a bit of sanding because it's all the paint prep. But I'll show you what John's been on with. So the next job we've got to do is work out where we're going to put these doors, but we can't do that until we've worked out about all the side lockers and that. So we've mocked up putting the belly locker in and we've mocked up putting the steps in because the only issue with the steps is where the spring hanger comes down here, you've got to make sure that the step doesn't hit it when the steps come out. So I'll show you the steps. So we're going to have this switch inside so you can open it whether you're inside or outside. So brilliant little fill steps then. They're not cheap, 400 quid, but they're brilliant. And then also my next job is we've got to work out about uh, cutting the cab through to the, the body. So what I've got is this seal here. It's called accordion seal. Again, it's not cheap, it's 50 pound a square meter. So it's 200 quid's worth of seal there. But that's where we'll cut it through this side and then we can mark it up on the box, cut through there, and then we'll have to fabricate a bracket to suit. So, let's get on. Well, there's no going back now. She's through. But I don't think we told you, but we're going to take the body off. So, I've got a two-poster ramp. So, we're just going to chuck the legs underneath the body, unbolt it, and take it off. But don't worry if you haven't got anything like that to do it. But uh, we're just going to take it off so it's a bit easier to paint. But obviously, you could do it without but while we've got it, we might as well make use of it. So one tool I'd definitely recommend getting though is uh, one of these little beauties. It's only cheap, but it's a deburring tool. But if you're ever doing metal work like this, you get like the swarf on either side of the metal, um, and then you have to use a file or something like that to do it. Whereas this, it's got two little wheels on the end, and it's adjustable as well, so you can do different uh, size thickness of steel. But if you see, show the people, Jess, you see the burrs on there, and then you just get this, just pull it down and it takes the burrs off so it's nice and smooth finish. Well, this worked out a treat. We were a bit worried because it seems so low, but because you're stepping up from in the cab, it works brilliantly. Step anyway. through, step through again, oh, show them. Yes. I'll show them. Show them. Ooh. And again. And again. Ooh, I'm such a loser. Anyway, next job, let's get this big beauty old box off. She's off. She's off. I'll tell you what, 
Jess used to give me all the grief in the world for getting all this gear. Now where's your grief? Well, I had to stop. Now where's your grief? I had to stop giving him grief when we built a house with the tools. Yeah. <laughs> but when we came from Australia, right, I had to get rid of everything. Oh, here we anything go. Anything I had to. Oh, of. you know what and I haven't shown the people. Well, I think I'm about to give you jip for it. Anything I didn't have, like I had two of, had to go, right? Couldn't fit in the bloody container. Just found today in the shed five rivy guns. Five. <laughs> Cheeky but bugger. But I haven't shown you my wheelbarrow. Remember when oh, I said I'd shown the wheelbarrow? This one came back from Australia with us as well. Let me get my wheelbarrow. Yeah, covering half my clothes or my pots or my pans. But no, no, no. We've got a bloody wheelbarrow all the way from Australia. Remember when we was in Slovenia? I said I'd show you my wheelbarrow. Look at this little beauty. Watch out the way, so I can see it. Plastic tub. She's got a bit of rust on her, but don't worry about that. Look at the size of it. The Aussies know how to build a wheelbarrow. It's all fresh, look. But I'll tell you what, I've been getting a lot of stick on Instagram from all these Sainsbury's delivery drivers saying these are clapped out motors. Now, I don't know what you boys are driving, but if this is a clapped out motor, then whew, you don't want to see what I have for my first van. It was a smiley face Ford Transit. I paid 400 quid for it. It was secure core blue and we roller painted it white. There was more body filler than body panels in it. And the windscreen was cracked. And I think it passed MOT for about three years because I just snipped the end of the wiper blade off. So it just cleared the crack. So she was a beauty. Morning, everyone. Good morning. We're not actually doing anything because it's quite foggy outside, isn't it, Jessica? It is. Well, you might not be doing anything other than annoying me. I am doing work. But as you can well see. I've got to tell you, Jess has turned into a prude. So last night, right, she's in the toilet doing her business. Why do you always have to tell everyone about Shh. me going to the toilet? And I said to her, I'm coming in for a shower, right? She was like, no, you're not coming in. This is my time. Not my time. We need some boundaries. I think most people It's agree. all right when we're in the van though, isn't it? When we're in the van, you don't mind. But ever There's since no we get choice. back, to, we get back to the house. She turns into a prude again. So she gives it all this. She loves spending quality time together. I don't know why we couldn't spend quality time. I'm in the shower. She's on the toilet. What's wrong with that? So my job for the day. So once the old fog clears and it dries up a little bit, I'm going to get all this body under sealed with a Schultz gun and some Schultz. So I've already done all the outside, but while the body's off, I thought I'd do whole of the inside. It's immaculate, like I said yesterday, but I might as well do it to stop any salt or anything corroding it later on in its life. And then while the body's off as well, that's the, the fuel tank pickup. And that union there, if you drill that, then you can put your night heater straight to it. So when you're running your night heater, you can run off the main tank rather than using a separate tank. So I'm gonna do that. And then first I'm gonna do this back door. So the plan for the back door is the bottom here. Basically I'm gonna just chop this door in half and I'm gonna have the bottom part for the garage. And then I'm gonna have an infill repaired in the front, in the middle. And then I'm gonna put the window in at the top. And the easiest way to get these out, these are called mono bolt rivets. And basically that is what it is there. And I've just pulled that apart so you can see. Uh, basically that just pulls out, pull, pulls in, and that spreads this rivet. But when it breaks off, obviously it stays in there like that. So it's a bit of a nightmare to get out. So all you gotta do is get a punch and, and then knock that middle part of the rivet through and then she's easy to drill out. So let's get doing that. So the easiest ways I've found to get these trims off, just get like a scraper blade. I've knocked the handle off of that so it's metal all the way through. And then just slide it in and knock it off. Window hole's cut out and the door's out, but I need to cut a bigger hole, so I'll explain why. But the front panel, the back panel on the roof are all 55 mil panels, and both the sides are 30 mil panels. So the divider is also 55, so I've got a bit of off cut here. So what I'm gonna do is if I was just to uh, try and stitch it in like that, it's only got both the, the sides for support, whereas if I cut these out like that, at least then it's got 
support there, support here, support there, it just makes it a lot stronger. It, it's not going to be that, that much pressure on it because the, the garage door is going to close on there and the window will just sit on there and it'll be bonding and everything uh, so it'll be real strong but it's just, just a better way of doing it anyway. Hopefully, that's all the holes cut anyway. So, we've got a window in there, and a window in there, and then we've got the door, and then the door from yesterday. And I know some people are a bit worried about the fact that I'm losing all strength by cutting these holes, but I'm putting some aluminium capping around the door, and by the time the door, the window, and everything else is in, and these cabinets, so this bed is gonna be secured from like that side to that side, so that will give it some rigidity there, and these units as well. I'm gonna fix them to the side and to the floor. So, to be honest, I reckon it'll be stronger than when it was new. So, yeah, that's coming along nicely. And then our next job, I'm gonna get under sealing. So, I've got it ready. I've just taped up the front, and all you do is you get, if you've never done it before, you get this under seal gun, and then you get this can of Schultz. And it's brilliant, like really good stuff. It covers up everything, and it's real satisfying to watch it go on. So, yeah, let's do it. So she's all under sealed anyway. So got all that done. I got underneath. It was a bit trickier getting underneath and getting it done, but uh, but yeah, well happy with that. And then I've just uh, put this back panel in. Like I say, Jess ain't back yet with the, the expanded foam, but. I've got the panel in, so I'm just going to clamp it up like that and just lift it up ever so slightly and then expand the foam around the holes and then, like I say, paste her up. So as soon as she's back, I'll get on with that. Well, the panel's in and it might look a bit of a mess now, but I'm telling you, it'll look good when I'm done. But if you've never used expanded foam before, don't touch it when it's like that because it just sticks to everything. It's, it's brilliant stuff, but at the same time, it's horrible. So just leave it, let it set, and then it just peels off afterwards with a, a knife or a saw or something like that. Morning, everybody. So you know how yesterday John told you he was done cutting holes? Well, he lied, because we still need to cut the external door for our gas locker. So we're just gonna take two six kilo gas bottles with us because all we do with it is cook and do hot water. So that should be way more than we need for the trip that we're gonna do. So it's gonna have, like I say, the external door here. There'll be a drop out vent in the bottom for the unlikely event that there is a leak. But because it's gonna be so cold where we're going, we need to insulate the walls of it as well. So we're gonna use the bits that we cut out for the windows and some leftover from the back door to build the lock around it, seal it all up, and there you go. We're gonna have our gas locker. So my first job of the day is I've got to fill these holes where I've put this panel in. And the panel is absolutely solid as it is now, just with the expanding foam, because it's like a glue as well. So I'm really happy how strong it is, but this will just, like, it'll be so solid with this stuff anyway. So this is Ipsen P40, and basically it's like fiberglass in like a paste already. So it's already sort of like made up. You just add hardener to it and then it goes off. Uh, and then what I've done is I've just beveled all the edges all the way around where the gaps are. And then I'm just going to fill it all up, and like I say, that should secure it nice and nice and strong anyway. So my next job is the capping for all the doors. So you haven't got to worry about the windows because they come with the frames with the windows when you buy them. But obviously because the side panels are different size to the front and the back panels, you have to be a bit careful because the original capping that comes on the front, uh, the back door is 55 mil capping, which is good. And you can get the seal for that as well, which is good. But they don't do capping for the side panels. They do seals, but no capping. Why, I don't know, but anyways. So what you have to go is, is get some inch and a half by inch and a half aluminium U-channel. So it works a treat. I've got that door uh, all framed up now anyway. Um, but I'll show you the door seal we're going to use as well. So again, this is the original door seal. This is a new length that we've got. Uh, the company called CBF, Commercial Body Fittings, 
and they do the lengths. It's cheap for the seal and the capping, so I'd recommend getting a new one. But this is the way it works. So obviously the door sits in there, and this is a triple seal. So it seals there, seals there, and it seals on the outside. Whereas a normal door seal will just have one seal. So this is why they use this. It's the best for insulation and the best for a fridge box. So for us, it's the best for the winter van. So I know it's a bit of a luxury, but I'd really recommend getting one of these saws. So it's only a little 210 millimeter one, but it's a multi-material one from Screwfix, Evolution ones. So they're only cheap. I got it second hand new, but even new they're under a quid. But even if you bought it and sold it afterwards, but basically it cuts, like it'll cut this. This is three mil, inch and a half by inch and a half aluminium. So that's what I'm gonna use for that. But like for the door seals and everything like that, to get a 45 mitre, it's brilliant every time. Whereas you'll know if you've tried to cut aluminium with an angle grinder, like trims and things like that, you just never get it right. Whereas, like I say, this is brilliant. So I've got the capping done, and now I've got to fit it. So what I've done is I've drilled three holes in every length, and I'm gonna pop rivet it. I am gonna sicker it as well, and sicker will probably be all right, but I thought, because we're gonna be in and out, if I pop rivet it, there's no chance of it moving or anything like that, and it'll be a bit more secure anyway. As you can see the state of me, I've been sanding and filling. Should we show everyone the state yeah? Don't show oh, them the crocs and Control socks. yourself, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, all I've used is easy filler, car body filler. And this is brilliant because it goes off real quick. Um, and obviously it's waterproof and everything because you use it on cars and things like that. But this is where you can see now what I mean about this back panel. So obviously when I used the expander foam, that insulated it and it sort of glued it all in and knitted it in. And then I use the, the fiberglass filler to give it a bit more strength. And then obviously the body filler now has smoothed that right off. So I've just got to sand that again, down again, and then we've got to prime it and then paint it. So, but I've got to sand the whole box now and get it all prepped. So that's going to be a while doing that. So I think I'll leave you here for now. But if you come back next week, hopefully, if the weather treats us good anyway, we'll get on painting it. <laughs>